Super Mario Bros. Wonder is one of the most exciting games Nintendo has announced in a long time. It's been over a decade since the last original 2D Mario, with new Super Mario Bros. U being part of the Wii U's launch lineup. But now, after years and years of waiting, Mario's newest side-scrolling adventure is finally upon us. But the game simply existing wouldn't have been enough. 2D Mario has spent the last few years in a bit of a reputational funk, the primary culprit of which being the new Super Mario Bros. series. I'm not going to waste your time saying what's been said over and over again because I have very little to add to the general conversation in that regard. Not bad games, very samey, a little bit of oversaturation, yada yada yada, but this all amounted to dwindling interest in Mario's two-dimensional future. Critical interest, that is. Obviously, anything with Mario slapped on it is going to be a casual and financial success. None of this was helped by the fact that Nintendo dropped the Mario Maker series at the height of this disinterest, giving power to the players and allowing for some truly remarkable and creative levels, making New Super Mario Bros. seem even less interesting in hindsight. And to throw salt in the wound, Mario-adjacent characters like Donkey Kong and Yoshi were running circles around the plumber with their releases at the time, Tropical Freeze and Woolly World cementing themselves as two of their respective franchises' best. Though, I mean, when has DK not been clowning Mario at every turn? While Mario used to be considered Mr. 2D platformer, his reputation had taken a major hit in the 2010s. But in recent years, something interesting began to happen. That collective disinterest transformed into… longing. Longing for a 2D Mario game with a fresh coat of paint, something that looked creative, inventive, that proved that at the end of the day, Mario is still king. Yes. Super Mario Bros. Wonder looks like everything I've wanted from a new 2D Mario. The trailer was overwhelming in the best possible way, providing so many fresh ideas that I often had trouble processing just what I was seeing. The Wonder Flower alone is a game changer in a very literal sense, filling each level with its own unique wacky hijinks. Yet, somehow, the Wonder Flower wasn't what excited me most about the trailer. Nor was the gorgeous new art style, varied level designs, or this goofy guy. Daisy. It was Daisy. For reference, I'm not even that big of a Daisy fan, so this was just as shocking to me as it is to you, but somehow, despite watching the trailer dozens of times at this point, Daisy remains the most hype aspect. But why is that? The Mario series is one that Nintendo is naturally very protective of. I wouldn't say that they're necessarily risk-averse with Mario, we did get Odyssey this generation after all, but being their number one mascot and face of video games as a whole, there's definitely an inclination to continue with what has worked in the past. It's the whole reason why we got five new Super Mario Bros. games. Tired as it became, the formula was still inarguably Mario, and that was reflected in the series' financial success. And as part of that brand safety, a predictable cast of characters arose. Let me just say that what I'm talking about here isn't the supposed Mario mandates that often integrate a lot of assumptions and sometimes delusions about what's going on behind the scenes when brought up in conversation, but instead simple, objective observations about how the Mario series has been operating. Despite having an impossibly large cast of characters, as most four-decade-long franchises do, Mario's core cast is obviously more focused, and more often than not, can be split up into tiers. In Tier 1, you've got your six primary characters, Mario, Luigi, Peach, Toad, Bowser, and Yoshi. These are the titans you'll see on every piece of Mario merchandise with little exception. And these are usually the characters that will make up the cast of your average Mario game, playable or otherwise. New Super Mario Bros. Wii? Mario, Luigi, and Two Toads. Super Mario 3D World, Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toad. And while Yoshi's appearance isn't always guaranteed, he's most definitely part of this group. On to Tier 2, you've got Toadette, Daisy, Rosalina, Wario, Waluigi, and Bowser Jr. Undoubtedly important characters to the Mario franchise, but ones that will never quite receive the same widespread fame as the Core 6, their appearances being far more spin-off-y. And then in Tier 3, you've got characters like Donkey Kong, Kamek, and Birdo. One might argue that DK should be moved up a tier, but eh, most of the time he's off doing his own thing, you know? Like, Wario has his own series too, but I'd still say he's widely considered a Mario character, while Donkey Kong is Donkey Kong. We're getting off topic. Nintendo hasn't acknowledged these tiers in any official capacity, but we're able to create them simply because of how the characters are utilized. And observing how and when these characters are implemented also allows us to take note of trends involving them. I say trends instead of rules because, again, we don't know exactly what's going on behind the scenes. But what we do know of is one of the most long-standing, confusing trends of them all. Daisy is not allowed in mainline Mario. Since her introduction in Super Mario Land 30 years ago, despite being one of the most popular and beloved characters in the Mario franchise, Daisy has not appeared in a single mainline Mario game. She's even had to watch other second-tier characters like Rosalina and Toadette get playable slots before her, sneaking their ways into 3D World and U Deluxe, respectively. 
But now, she's here. I'm looking at the key art for Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and I see Princess Daisy, and it still feels surreal. And again, I gotta reiterate, I'm not even a Daisy guy. But this is so inherently exciting that I can't help but be thrilled. Because this, more than anything else, tells us just what kind of game Super Mario Bros. Wonder is. Those level designs and gimmicks looked incredibly fun, but at the end of the day, they could have just decided to show us the very best of what the game had to offer. It, in and of itself, doesn't speak to the game's freshness, at least not completely and entirely. But nothing screams breaking boundaries more than doing away with an invisible rule that a franchise has had for over three decades. Daisy's inclusion in Super Mario Bros. Wonder immediately tells the player that they're in for something new, something unlike anything they've seen from this series before. They're re-evaluating what a 2D Mario game can and should be, and personally, I'm ecstatic to see Daisy's first mainline appearance at the center of this metamorphosis. Hmm? What? No, I'm not counting Super Mario Run! Get out of here!